Brian. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Let's see what we have going on today. We have the ES Mini trading about sideways, about 4908 uh, 50 cents right there. We have the Russell Futures trading at 1982, up about 0.5%. Uh, the NQ slightly down off about 0.08%, trading about $17,606 there. Dow Futures sideways again at 38,071. Gold contract, interesting movements in it going forward, okay? So we're about sideways right now. Trading at 2017, of course, we've been having uh, not a lot of action in it, but just kind of a slow burn down, just a tad. Still above that level of 2000, which is good for the psyche on a lot of things here. We're looking at silver trading at $23 on the futures contract. Copper finally back up 386. Now we're down slightly today. We had about yesterday a massive tick up in it uh, on some pretty significant volume. So that's good for all the copper holders out there. <clears throat> we take a look at, you know, let's really say some commodities that are, are getting pretty strong right now. And we're looking at light Swede crude futures trading up about $2.32, up about 3.09%. That is about $77.41. Of course, a lot is going on. We had some issues in production uh, in the Northwest uh, last week. Uh, you had some issues with freezing of the pipes. Of course, some things still persist complication-wise um, around the Red Sea area. I believe Libya is back and producing. Um, but as it is, I mean, this, you know, we were kind of anticipating a, a tick up in, in crude oil futures. I mean, energy is just a little bit more expensive right now. Of course, it's been a very cold winter in the U.S. too. Tesla, some pretty, you know, this is pretty substantial for this stock. Um, a lot of the times... You know, you have this conversation. Tesla gets sold off every now and then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gets sold off every now and then. And, you know, really rebounds uh, quite well. Uh, you know, this has been a decline in this stock since about December 28th. Uh, it has been a healthy decline with a lot of volume. Or not a lot of volume, but, you know, a substantial amount of volume. Uh, and then today, with some reports released uh, and then some comments from Elon Musk, uh, quite a gap down. Trading at 182.58, down about 12.16%. Talk a little bit about them uh, later in the program. Still Dynamics trading at just under 116. Crazy the stock moves. The DXY, okay, so let's take a look, right? DXY still trading at 103.58. It was off about 800 ticks yesterday morning. A lot of people were, I mean, we were trading, what, 102.74? And then it really, it, it made a recovery throughout the day. It, this is the hard thing with an, anticipating this market, okay? Obviously, with the lower dollar, uh, there's kind of a, you know, typically an inverse relationship with the uh, rest of the market. Uh, and then, of course, with metals as well. We've been having a lot of trouble with gold, getting gold moving and, and just kind of getting any kind of action in it. That's not just a very, you know, kind of slow rundown in, in that kind of industry. Uh, I think that fake out had a lot of people see um, some action potentially forming. Well, we're right back here at that 103.57 level. It has been pretty sticky um, around that, at least for this month. And we'll have to wait and see what kind of goes on. I, I do think, obviously, the market's been making all-time highs. Um, it's been doing, you know, all right. We're going to wait for the Fed on January 30th to see um, if we get any really big conviction either way. I think people really want to see these rates come down from the Fed, and I don't know if it'll be as soon as they're expecting. If that's the case, and it's not a very, you know, flowery kind of meeting this month from the Fed, you know, I, I, I could potentially see some kind of minor pullback in it. Obviously, it's inarguable that the market wants higher price. If the market wants higher price, the market gets higher price, but... You know, I wonder if there's going to be some kind of step back into kind of a more conservative outlook for the next few months, depending on what the Fed says. The Q here trading at 425.68, Google at 153.29, up about 2% today. Meta trading 392.71, Disney 
making a little bit of progress with it, trading uh, just under $95, 9549 Of course, some great kind of pump up here uh, around November 9th, November 10th, has been able to trade within this bounds of 90 to 95 you know, if you can get back above this 95 level for a few days with some decent volume, yeah, stock looks okay. Apple, 194, we can talk a little bit about them as well. Uh, then, of course, some of the companies we were looking at last week. Um, but what I want to look at is, is Humera. Uh, you know, they're down 11.33% today. Again, some pretty uh, significant earnings. Uh, downside, Fisker, you know, they had some great news but again as i was saying I, I don't think fisker's really shelled out fully yet and of course they got it sold off today uh nokia is super interesting we'll talk about them in a little bit of course comcast as well let's talk about comcast quickly they are the parent company of a streaming program called uh or excuse me excuse me uh streaming platform called peacock i don't know much about peacock nobody really uses peacock you keep getting these email blasts from them constantly on every email I have. They've somehow uh, have, have gotten that address, and then they keep sending it to us. Nobody, nobody uses it. However, um, it, it looks that NFL is going to be streaming on Peacock, and this was uh, pretty good for Comcast. Let's take a look a little bit about them. Okay, so they had 3 million new Peacock subscribers during the latest financial quarter. Came in part from viewers drawn to the NFL and the Big Ten football games without specifying actual numbers. Uh, NBCU's loss related to Peacock amounted to $825 million in the fourth quarter, compared with a year-ago loss of $978 million um, on revenue of $660 million. They're saying that Peacock is now going to be the fastest-growing streaming platform. I don't know if that means anything when the platform's already significantly smaller user base wise than every other platform they're having to compete with. You know, obviously, you know, you can have high percent growth and it's a lot easier to achieve that when you already don't have a very high base to begin with. Right. You know, I, I don't know what staying power really Peacock has in this world. You're already seeing way higher costs of operation and things like Netflix are going to be increasing the price. They're getting rid of some of their ad-free subscription uh, in other parts of the world, so you'll still pay the same amount for subscription, uh, and, and now you're going to get ads. And that's kind of giving you insight into what other streamers are dealing with. It's something like Peacock that already doesn't really have a huge base. Um, I, you know, I don't know what the future is for them. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.